Okay, everyone who's entering the room, good evening, good afternoon, East Coast, West Coast, good morning. This is so nice to have you all here on this Zoom with chiropractic Dr. Carey. And this uh, Zoom will be recorded. So if you don't want your head on, uh, on the video, then just uh, leave your uh, video out. But we like to see you. So put on the, uh, the video because we like to see you. We like to wave at you. Oh, here is Monique, Monique Jongmans. Hello, Monique, how are you? Hi. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah. Tim, Maria, Martina, hi. hi. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, Geraldine. Geraldine is the band. No. Anya. Oh, so many people. Well, this is this is fantastic. Oh, let me see. Dr. Carol is here as well. Dr. Carol from Florida. Wow, very nice. Let me see. Where's Dr. Carol? Dr. Carol, are you here? If you can say yeah. something, Dr. Carol, then I can. Uh, see you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, hi. Hi, Carol. Hi. So nice that you're here. Let me introduce Dr. Carol. Dr. Carol Gentler. She's the best mentor for me ever in medical tomography. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> oh, you have a nice crowd here. Absolutely. We had more than 80 registrants for today. So. Yeah, we have we have a nice audience, so yeah. Well, wonderful that you're here. I see all the others. Geraldine, nice that you're here. Hi, Geraldine. Okay, so let me start by introducing Dr. Carey for you, because this Zoom will be about uh, chiropractors and uh, medical tomography. What is the relation? How can we benefit from medical tomography and practices, and especially the chiropractic? So, where are you, Dr. Carey? Can you say hi. Here. Yeah, you're Hello. right here. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Hey, you. Hey, Wonderful that you're here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, Dr. Carey, let me introduce him. Brings many lifetimes of experience to the practice having nine chiropractors yeah, in his immediate yeah. family. Um, let me mute someone here. Um, so having nine chiropractors in his uh, immediate family and being a third generation chiropractor himself, Dr. Carey has practiced in the Baltimore and Ocean City, medical doctor as well as founding and operating two very successful chiropractic practices in Panama. Dr. Carey served as the official <laughs> chiropractor for the HBO series, The Wire, and worked with many professional baseball teams, players from the Baltimore Orioles and American football team players from the Baltimore Ravens. In addition, he has been awarded best chiropractor in Baltimore, Maryland. Dr. Carey publishes doctor and patient educational materials for chiropractors is a sought after guest lecturer at many chiropractic events, produces a weekly podcast, uh, Sick Talks, look it up, uh, focusing on chiropractic philosophy and is the owner and operator of sickafoos.com. Dr. Carey has been a featured speaker at several of the world's largest chiropractic seminars, including Cairo, Europe and Axiom. Welcome, Dr. Carey. We're so honored to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. yeah. And let me introduce me myself very shortly. Uh, let me share my screen with you. Um, here we go. Share it. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm uh, Francine van Broekhoven, very short. Uh, I had a practice acupuncture years ago. I'm now um, a certified medical tomographer and trainer. I'm the author of the Breast Health Handbook and Medical Tomography uh, and uh, speaker, founder of The Green Nurse in the Netherlands and Belgium. And well, let's, uh, let's see. If you have any 
questions, then you can put those questions in the chat box. I'll check the chat box as much as I can. And you can ask your questions directly to Dr. Kerry. Um, and so, yeah, d d does anyone not know how Zoom works? Or you can, uh, let me see, here's a chat box. If you want to say hello in the chat box, then you make note to me that you understand how it works. Can you find the chat, the chat box? If you hover with your mouse all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom, then you see there a chat box. So just give me a chat. Yeah, nope. Job knows how to find it. <laughs> Thank you, Yo. Wonderful. Okay. So if you have any questions, just come up with them. You don't have to wait till the end of the Zoom meeting. You can ask them right now. So uh, here's the first question already. And, and please answer it for us, uh, Dr. Carey. What is chiropractic and why is spinal health so important? Oh, you need to unmute yourself. You're muted, Karen. Yeah. So that's go. a very good question. So, so by definition, chiropractic is a science and an art and a philosophy that focuses on the inherent recuperative powers of the body to heal itself from above, down, and inside out without the uses of drugs or surgery. Not saying that drugs and surgery don't have a place, but we feel that given the ability to have a functioning nervous system, that the body should be able to take care of itself without the use of the drugs and surgery. There is, of course, stages of limitation of matter that, that go further, but, but chiropractic basic philosophy is if the brain and the body's tissue cells can communicate at a basic level that the brain and the body, given proper rest, diet, nutrition, and other factors, should be able to take care of everything because our tissue cells have billions of years of knowledge incorporated into them and, and are able to, to create more drugs than any pharmaceutical company ever could. So that the basic, basic, basic understanding of chiropractic is that the brain and the body need to communicate without interference. And chiropractic finds the areas where the bones are out of alignment, pinching on nerves and decreasing the information from the brain to whatever part of the body that that nerve goes. That's, that's chiropractic 101. <laughs> wow, you're saying all that already a lot. And, and you know, I collected a lot of images because if we go through the images, uh, yeah. oh, I love those images. Yeah, the images are great, isn't it? This is yeah. this is also the vision software. Thank you, Dr. Carol, <laughs> for this wonderful software. And you can see a lot of things already on these two images. And maybe yeah. we could just dive into it. What do you see? Sure. You want me to say what I see or yeah. is there a question? Okay, so uh, here you have a 78-year-old a, a male with a drop shoulder on the left side, has a pacemaker on the left chest wall for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing I see up here is right around the neck, uh, right where the, the red cross is there and the, mm -hmm. on the left picture, you see the tension around the base of the neck. That area is approximately C7, C1. Directly below that is a green area. Now that green area is what we call a cool island, at least in chiropractic thermography. Mm -hmm. And a cool island is an example of an area that is, yeah, is, is, is chronic yeah. and so compressed, being between T1 and T4, that it just shows very limited motion. And that comes from what we call you know, the, the tech neck area, the head jutting forward, looking down, sitting at a desk, writing the report. And that area becomes highly compressed because between C7 and T1 is a transition segment from the cervicals to the thoracic. And it causes a great amount of pressure there. And, and that would cause chronic problems. And if you could see this man from the front, a lot of times you see in, from, in the dermatomal areas between T1 and T4, reddening in that area. So it's cool in the back, but where the nerves go, you see inflammation and irritation. Now looking over to the right, I call that, <laughs> I like to call it backpack spine. That's what I've, I've, I've termed it. Not that it has to do with the backpack, but you see the cold island in the center and then the rhomboids around the side that are inflamed and more inflamed on the left side. In chiropractic, there's a, a technique that uses a two probe sensor uh, mm -hmm. and it only measures two spots on the spine given any time. With chiropractic thermography and medical thermography, you can look at all the areas of inflammation and swelling at one given time. Looking at this as well, you come down into the lumbar region and you see the white areas, and that's 
somewhere between L1 and L4. And that's an area, again, of chronic inflammation and chronic irritation. But if you actually look from the cool island at the top around T4 all the way down to L5, you see red all along the spine. And from what I, from my experience in, in, in doing this over the past three years with chiropractic thermography, is that's what we would call a compression situation. So as long as you live on a planet with gravity, as long as you have people that irritate you, as long as you sit for too many hours, as long as you have stress, you're going to have compression of the cervical vertebra, the thoracic vertebra, and the lumbar vertebra. And as they compress, they cause irritation and inflammation, especially of the small muscles that surround the spine, the multipedis and the rotator. And that would show me a sign of compression, which would mean that, that there's possible disc irritation, and that shows up with the white between L1 and L4 down at the bottom. So it, it's once you start reading these, you can look at it in two seconds and be like, okay, got it, you know, and it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And definitely he has much more inflammation on the left side, but the thing that I've learned is just because the inflammation is on the left and, and you, the, 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 you see the swelling, it doesn't mean that that's where the problem is. That could be a muscle trying to respond to a compressed nerve on the right side. So it's, it, it's, a, it's just a really great map in order to see what's going on at that moment. And um, we, we, we take these pictures pretty much every 12 visits. To, to just see where we're going. And, and well, Francine has been a godsend because she, she, she can read these better than I can. And, and it's just, it's amazing how, how much you can get from this. And, and that's just, you know, two seconds looking at this. Yeah, yeah. So every 12 weeks, you say, so you're monitoring- 12 visits, your... sorry, not every 12 weeks, every oh. 12 visits. Oh, every 12 visits. Oh, that's even shorter. So you're monitoring your uh, patients or clients with, Thermography. Yeah. So it's, wow. it's you know, it, it's amazing because thermography can be a moment in time if you don't use it properly. You know, if you don't give them time to rest and cool off the area and, and make sure they're not having caffeine or, or eating any sugars or any stimulants prior. But if you do it properly, you can, you can see more, in my opinion, from a thermography than you can with a plain film x-ray. Wow. Because plain film x-ray, you're just looking at hard tissue. You're not looking at its effect on the soft tissue. So that's what I like so much about it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Hey, another question uh, on these two images. On uh, the left, there's the male with the broad shoulder. He also has a pacemaker on his yep. left chest wall. Mm -hmm. um, could uh, a crooked spine or even a compression there on the green island, as you say, the yeah. gold spot, could that have any influence on this uh, area of where the pacemaker is? Well, it can actually have an effect on the lungs and the heart because T1 through T4 goes to the heart and to the lungs. Okay. Our body is very redundant. It has, it, it's like NASA. It always has a second and third plan in order to make sure that the space shuttle rocket doesn't blow up. T1 through T4 go to the heart and to the lungs. The heart has its own ectopic seat via the vagus nerve, but yes, a, 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 a pacemaker will come back and show it. And I, it could actually be the pacemaker that's sending impulses back to this area, deadening the nerve between T1 and T4. Now, I, I would love to see the front side to see what the pacemaker, if it shows up. But um, it's funny, my very first cadaver in school that I dissected was, had a pacemaker. And um, <laughs> Let, let me let me mute someone. Can you mute yourself, please? Uh, here's. Uh, <laughs> well, I think I think she's already muted. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's muted. So um, yeah, we will have a question coming in from Lula in a moment. Okay, we'll wait for you, Lula. But yeah, I know that the 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 uh, anterior side of this male is uh, hyperthermia on the area of the uh, the pacemaker. Uh, oh yeah? It is, yeah. A large hyperthermia area, which is radiating down towards the chest wall, That's to the left, the left breast. Yeah, it's dead in the nerves so that they're not responding. So, you know, they, they, they don't, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's a response to the central nervous system's activation of that nerve area. You know, the great thing that I like to use with thermography, if you have a dermatomal pain, a dermatomal chart, 
I, I literally hand out, I don't, do I have a copy of it? I don't think I have a copy of it. I hand out a dermatomal chart of, of, of the human body because you literally, if you put up the thermograph with, next to the dermatomal chart, you can literally show somebody and you can see, oh, okay, that goes to C1. Oh, that goes to L5. Oh, that goes to L4. And when you get down to the legs, you know, it, it's identical to, to areas where I find bulging discs or subluxation to where there's irritation. Now, the cool thing about thermography is it'll show up as inflammation in mostly acute situations, but it'll show up as cold as in chronic situations, areas where it's been there for so long. Um, you can see on the picture on the right, the 58 year old man around the area of the triceps, you can see where it's a little teal, but teal is a good color. Teal, yellow, and green are my favorite colors. Mm -hmm. But in that area where it's teal, you can see that there's a decrease in the C, if you look at the dermal from the chart, it's a decrease in the, in the C7 uh, nerve uh, dermatomes that go to that level. Mm -hmm. um, I see that constantly because C7, T1 transition segments are always irritated. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm going off topic. I've no, absolutely not because I love the dermatomes uh, because it relates to something Everything. going some, going on somewhere else in the body. Mm -hmm. You can always relate it back to the spine. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a map for the human body. Yeah. So Monique also asked, can you actually see the dermatomes? No, you, don't, you can't see them, but you need to have an understanding of which dermatome belongs to a, a certain part of the spine. Exactly right. And every part of your skin relates back to a different part of the spine. Your skin is your largest organ. People forget that. I always ask, I love to ask people that question when I'm teaching. I'm like, what's the largest organ of the body? People are like, oh, the stomach, the lungs, the heart, the spleen. I'm like, nope, it's your skin. But your skin is so large that it can't be controlled by one level or in the heart and lungs, T1 through T4. With the skin, it's literally C1 all the way down to the sacrum. Every single part of your skin is innervated. But there you go. Here we Every go. Every single part of it is innervated by a different level. And those levels relate to the skin's response to the, the peripheral nervous, you know, ner nervous system's response to compression or, or, or release of a subluxation. Um, best thing to do, I love doing is doing a, a, a thermal before an adjustment and immediately after, and just to see how the body goes from red to green and yellow. Wow, just nice. one adjustment. Yeah. yeah. Can you amazing. see the dermatome map now? Yeah, I can see it. Beautiful. Okay, okay, great. Every yeah. one of those levels relate back to a level of the spine. Mm -hmm. And that's how we use thermography in our clinic without being able to do x-rays to discover areas where the subluxation. Now, a subluxation, by definition, is a condition of a vertebra that's lost its position with the one above it or below it or both to the extent that it's less than a, a complete break or a luxation, but enough to impinge a nerve and decrease the impulse from the brain to whatever part of the body that nerve goes to. So it, a lot of times we always, you know, like, like with... Um, let's just say uh, bulging discs at L4, L5, most common. You'll see an absence of toes and an absence of the heels up to the Achilles area. So if you mm -hmm. look at the dermatome, it's, it's literally identical to that. And, and so people are like, how do you know I had a bulging disc at L5? I'm like, because you don't have any heels. And you don't, half your, half your Achilles is gone or you have no toes. And, yes. and so it's, it's, like I said, it, it, it tells a much easier story than an x-ray. Okay, well, let's jump to, uh, we're going back and forth with these images, Sorry. you know. Let's let's go to this one, because you already mentioned. Ooh, hey, here we go. Your, your complete uh, lower left leg is gone. Yes. <laughs> we left call it regional back, pain And syndrome. L1, L2, L3 on the front left leg. Also, she has no hand on the left side, so T5 through T1. Oh, these uh, are two uh, different persons. So oh, they are? the okay. one with the oh. hands is a, is a different person than the one with the legs. Yep. Okay, so let's start with the legs. So mm -hmm. we have a, a female, obviously. Yes. Um, her left leg, L1, L2, L3, completely gone. L4 and L5. And now here's that. If you look at the left leg on the back side, you can see that dermatomal pattern where it's, it sort of points upward. So the whole L5 is gone. The L4 is gone. I, 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 I would actually say with that amount of decreased thermal imaging definitely has a bulging disc between L4 and L5. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see with the lumbar region because it's a different temperature grade that you use for the legs than you do for the core. 
Mm -hmm. But you can also see L1, L2, L3. So her whole lumbar region, L1 through L5 and S1 and S2 in the sacrum are, are, are gone. And if you look on the right picture, her sacrum on the right, you can see a, a red spot above her right hip. And that's the SI joint on the right. And you can see her sacrum is rotated to the right. Mm -hmm. Now, again, this is me doing this every day for years. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I can see things that aren't normally seen. And you can see the gluteal fold on the right, which is much more irritated, which also is part of S1 and S2. So the, it, I would say chronic irritation on the left and acute irritation on the right. But she has a block between the, the on the right side as well with the S1 and S2. So her sacrum is, is out and her whole lumbar spine is out. Yeah, yeah. You know, but the what right side is doing pretty good until you get to the knee area. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's no big deal. But the, the, the right side's not as bad. I would like to see the bottom of her feet. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, completely black, I thought. But I imaged her myself about two years ago. She oh, fell off a horse and she, she fell with her, uh, with her spine. She fell on a pole right next to the, the path. She, she was walking her uh, with her uh, horse. So she fell off the horse. Mm. Yeah. And so she got a lot of physiotherapy and she said, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. I'm, you know, I'm in so much pain. You know, if you stretch and massage and exercise a spine around a bone that's out of alignment, you're just exercising muscles, ligaments, and tendons that are not supporting the bones in the proper position. So you can make it worse. Yeah. Yeah. And the pain was getting I'm a worse. big fan of physical therapy. Don't get me wrong. I think massage and physical therapy are great, but if you're, it's, it's like brushing your teeth with a cavity and expecting the cavity to get better. You, you, you got to get to the root of the problem before you fix everything else around it. Yeah. If that makes any sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the picture on the right, though. Yeah. The one I mean, with the, the hands. Sorry, the left. What's happening there? Well, okay. So look at her fingers on her left hand. Mm -hmm. So they're all purple. So. That, that's, the, that's the extent of the, the literally C5 through T1. Um, now on the right side, it's her, again, it's even worse. And with that amount of blackout, that's a bulging disc, I guarantee you. A bulging disc C5 through T1 on the right. But the, the left side is, is responding to it as well. So the bulging disc is primarily on the right side, but there's some irritation on the left as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, and then she, she has a, 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 that red spot right at the knuckle on the, yeah. on, on the left side. I, I would mark that down as an arthroside because um, it's, too, it's too focused, mm -hmm. like a, a, a form of arthritis on the right knuckle. Okay. So. Yeah, okay. Well, interesting images, right? They're amazing. I love them. <laughs> so let's go to this one. How do you like this one? Oh, okay. Same person? Uh, no, those are different persons. Okay. But we, uh, I see a lot of these images of the feet, uh, the plantar side of the feet, where you see a lot, a lot of hypothermia in one feet. And mm -hmm. it shows that something is going on, altered gait, something in the spine. Is it elevated hip or what is it? But um, yeah. So it could be one of three things. It altered gait from, from a rotated hip or pelvis. So when the hip and pelvis rotates, we have to remember that your, your, the, the head of your, your femur does not go in the center of the hip. It's slightly to the front or anterior. So if the hip rotates, it'll look like the foot raises or lowers or gets mm -hmm. longer or higher. It's just a rotation of the hip. Oh, now there is functionally short legs or long legs, mm -hmm. but that's very rare. Or it's the fact that they have a bulging disc or an irritated nerve on the opposite side. So she's relying or walking more on the other side. So that comes a lot with the history um, and, 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 and asking, you know, is there radiating pain? Is there numbness? Is there tingling? You know, yeah, that, a lot of this would come with sitting down and discussing it. Uh, with what I see here, I, I really wouldn't be able to tell you exactly unless I actually knew her full history. It's, it's either a, 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 a disc problem, a rotated hip problem, or a subluxation at L4, L5. 
Mm-hmm. Public facing being pinch nerve. Fancy word for pinch nerve. Pinch nerve. <laughs> pinch nerve. Yeah. yeah. So also this this man on the right side is a young man, twenty years old, and uh, it looks like he has an elevated hip. Or could it be? Well, you say it's very rare that people have a leg longer, or shorter. It's usually caused by accidents or birth de- deformation. I mean, it's it's. The body's so symmetrical. Um, the, the the man on the right, if, if, if he's standing and, and the camera is completely vertical and horizontal, mm-hmm. he has a, definitely a high right hip, low left hip. You, you can just look at the bottom of, of it, how it's rotated. The musculature on the right side is already irritated and inflamed because yes. of the way he's standing. Yes. Um, and, and, and the anterior superior iliac spine on both sides are, are also irritated. So the, I would... I would, without seeing the rest of his pictures, I would put this down as a, yeah, yeah, a rotated ilium. Mm-hmm. Oh, ilium. Um, because if you look at the back side of it, you can see the two small dots down at the bottom, which is an uh, indication that the sacrum is rotated to the left side as well. Because the body abhors an empty space. So if a hip rotates posteriorly and, and laterally, the sacrum will drop into that area. And then you'll have inflammation on the other side because it'll send fluid there. So you have to be able to look at the posture of it as well as the the the, the way the spine moves because inf- you know a, a fluid buildup on the opposite side will mimic inflammation as well as a hip that's rotated and a sacrum that's dropped down and over. So it's you, you got to know the posture of the body as as well. I mean. It's like when you, you taught me about some of the, the, the thermography with the breath. You know, there's so much more about it. Is it in plain limbs? Is it this? Is it that? It, but it, it's, it's learning and reading these images repeatedly. But Absolutely. You know, they, 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 they will tell you a, a story. Yeah. I mean, a tremendous story. I mean, look at the inflammation on the right hip mm-hmm. from the anterior view. Yes. It, it's so much more inflammation on that right side. And, and the hip flexors on the right side are irritated. And then you look on the back picture and it's the, you know, it's the whole, the, 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 uh, the lateral uh, abdominal muscles on the right. And then you got that whole inflammation between L1, L2, L3. Mm-hmm. So I would like to see his legs to see if L1, L2, L3 dermatomes are, are, are inflamed. Yeah. yeah, you want to see the whole picture. That's why- I want to see all of them. <laughs> yeah, that's why we say a lot of time to our clients, we say, if you come in for the first time, do a full body. Because yeah, always. Yeah, full body you wanna you wanna you wanna know where it way. comes from. Yeah, you wanna yeah. know uh, even for um uh, women who come in for the breast study, yeah. I always see patterns over the breast and I immediately want to know is it coming from dental issues, spine, yeah. whatever, you know, you wanna know. <laughs> You sent me, without saying names, you sent me a patient that showed up with some, some uh, inflammation on the right atlas region mm-hmm. and some inflammation over the jaw. And when I looked at the picture, I sent her to her dentist and they found out that she had a, an abscess on her uh, one of her teeth and it was so bad, she, her energy was down, this, that. They went and they pulled her teeth and it, it changed her life. So don't tell me that thermography can't change mm-hmm. anything. They, She's like, well, why is my atlas hurt? I said, because your atlas is associated with the TMJ. The TMJ is the, you know, with the teeth and this and that. And, you know, she's like, screw that tooth, get rid of it. And if they had that impact, they had to put a drainage thing in because, you know, it was draining into it. And something like that could ultimately kill her. I mean, more dental injuries are terrible with the abscess that they create. So thermography is just uh, it's, amazing. Yeah. It's, Okay, someone's asking uh, scoliosis. Okay, let's go to an image oh, yeah. with scoliosis. I think we have one here. It's not very clear. On the left side, there are two images of a back with a scoliosis. Yep. yep. And a lot of people say to me, well, there's nothing I can do about it. I just have it. Is that is that true or what? No, because there's two types of scoliosis. There's functional scoliosis, which, and, and, and there's, to genital scoliosis, you know, one that you're born with, or 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 that is the, when the body's forming, it doesn't form the vertebra right, and you have a collapsed vertebra. But then there's functional, such as bad posture, repeat trauma, you know, a bone that's been out of alignment for so long that the muscles have just curved. 
you know, just looking at this one, if the scoliosis is on the on, on the left side, uh, is it the same person or is it different? No, different person. Okay, because yeah. I would say the one on the bottom is is congenital, and the one on the top is functional. Functional. Okay. Functional meaning that it can be corrected. That okay. If 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 there's not limitation of matter or too much damage done to the disc or bone over years, mm. that's a, again a lot comes from the history. We learn just as much from the history and the questions as we do from the images. Yeah, okay. Um, she was very toxic, the woman above. Yeah, she was I can very see toxic. That she the, had the white that you see there, everything from her T7, <laughs> which is the stomach and the whole intestinal region all the way down to L5. So even her uterus and everything would, would not be functioning properly in, in that type of image. Um, mm -hmm. Now the guy, the, I, I, I would take that as a man on the on the bottom. Is that a female? I can't. Uh, I, I think it's a female. Okay. So see, we we when you see the red flare out, we call that flame sign, uh, and a flame sign is indicative of a bulging disc almost ninety percent of the time. So, and then you see how it curves up and over to the right, and then you see her whole rhomboid. So that. Which to me is that's a structural or a a a a a a a a a a a inherited scoliosis. It's okay. That's yeah. part of her DNA. It's causing it to turn that way. Um, it, it's it's quite obvious because it, it it curves over to the right, and then she has a right high shoulder. So then it you know she's trying to balance herself out. Yeah. And it goes to the left. That's why never put a mirror in your thermography room, ever. No. <laughs> because they'll try to write themselves to the to themselves. I've had so many patients that come in and they're standing like this. And I'm like, I'm standing straight. I'm like, great. So great. Right. And then you you take a picture and and you do a, 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 a how adjustment. Do you, I'm, I'm remembering my Dutch words, but not my American words. Oh. Uh, postural. Postural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. picture and they're like holy crap i'm standing that way i'm like yeah yeah so, um yeah right high shoulder right rotation of the of, of the of, of the vertebra of, of the spinal column and then the whole rhomboids up and then you see that flame sign coming down on the right side into the rhomboid so the scapula is also being affected so that one is a pretty severe one it is yeah that that one oh let me see <laughs> yeah it is oh I thought I could move it up, but I can't. But uh, okay, that's okay. You can still see it, but <clears throat> oh, that, yeah. that rotation there and then the flame side to the left. So mm -hmm. when scoliosis has been there for so long, you, you're going to have bulging discs. You're going to have herniated discs because it's, you know, it's the, the spine just rotates and turns. And, and the rhomboid there is, 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 is trying to, it's, it's pulling the muscles over to the right. And then you see that, tr that, that red hot trap on the left. And that's the trap trying to pull the spine back because it's, it's a tug of war. The body wants to be balanced and it's going to do whatever it can. That's why, you know, most of the time you find that the area where the pain is, is the side that's trying to pull the muscles and the bones off the area where the nerve has been so compressed that it's just dead and not feeling anything. In it. Yeah. 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 You get, yeah. You get compensations all over the yeah. body. Oh yeah. God, yes. The one on the right, that's a lot of varicose veins. The varicose, yeah. Well, uh, is that a varicose vein or what is it? Yeah, they are all or? varicose veins. Now, yeah. you got a hot spot at L4, L5, take them. Mm -hmm. And that, again, see that flame side to the left? That's a bulging disc. Yeah. Do you mean the, the, uh, the um, I mean, the, uh, you're talking about this one, the, the, the one on top? Because those yeah, are the one two on different. Top, the one on top. So okay, that, that yeah. white, red, hot area, that's a bulging disc because that flame sign to the left. So it goes red. It's uh -huh. like the sun, you know, you see that flame. That's why we call it a flame sign. Yeah. But that line coming down, that's a varicose vein feeding into that region. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. That's, that's a, what's a varicose vein in Dutch? I forget. Uh, Spatade. Spatade, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> Spatade. And, and is it the same person on the bottom picture? No, that, that's a different person, but the yeah. one on the bottom, I like that so much because it has a sympathetic response of the other. Yeah, hand. a lot of sympathetic response. Yeah, and you know, a, a, a sympathetic response also gives a lot of pain. And sometimes a physiotherapist will only work on the painful side. 
when the problem is on the other side. On the other side. That's what I was talking about. The the you know it's you, the 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 on the left picture the the trap on the left the trap fiber up here. Mm -hmm. That that's a response to the curvature to the right. It's trying to pull it off. I can almost guarantee you this person is so used to the pain on the right that they probably were more complaining about this spot on the left. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah it's, it's the unaffected side that's doing all the work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we learn a lot here. Let me see, what <laughs> else do we have? We have this gentleman. It was the same gentleman as the one with the... Um, uh, first picture. Yeah, with uh, of the first picture, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this at a different date, the 78-year-old man? Yes. Is this later? No, this was, uh, I think this was before. So let me go back, see what this, so this was later. Okay. And this was this later. Yeah, this is later. This was okay. earlier. Okay. Yeah. So there you see that's between C3 and C5. So he has numbness and tingling on the right side. Again, being a chronic area there with been compressed for so long, but he still has the numbness and tingling down the right arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's bring C5, in this C three, C three and C five. You're gonna you're gonna notice it, you know, in the neck and in the trap, but then also in the delt region and also coming down. Um, not as much into the fingers, but mostly into the delt region. Now, if it's down at C six, what it could be, it also would feel he would feel the numbness and tingling in the first two fingers, mm -hmm. which again, it's just the, it's the dermatome to tell you that. Yes. Yeah. Can you see the dermatomes now? I brought it in. Yeah, I can see them. Yeah. Yeah, you can so, see it. Okay. Yeah, you can see the some. We call it the <laughs> we call the the C six dermatome the six shooter because it looks like a gun when we hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. So, uh, but he was uh, kind of afraid to have it fixed because he said, "Oh, it's my neck, and I'm already." Um, my immune system is not good. I have uh, things on my heart going on. You know, what do you say to those people? If your immune system isn't good and the cervical region is the primary area where the immune system functions, it actually functions between occiput C1 and C2. Your okay. brain stem houses your immune response system, period. If you are having a the problems that we can see here, especially between C3 and C5, C6, I can guarantee you, you can see C1, C2 on the left, his atlas is rotated, which is pinching off his brainstem, which would decrease his body's ability to create white blood cells so his immune system would be depressed. Oh my. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's, I mean, I would say, well, your immune system is depressed because your cervical system, your, your, your whole nervous system is shutting down. You know, what controls your immune system? Your brain and your nervous system. Yeah. What controls every system in your body? Your brain. Your brain and your nervous system. Absolutely, yeah. Does your heart tell your fingers how to make a fist? No, mm -hmm. it's your nervous system. Yeah. Does your heart tell your stomach how to digest food? No, it's your nervous system. So that's why thermography is so amazing with the entire practice because it you, your skin tells the story of what's going on inside. Thermography can't show you your stomach, but it can show you the dermatomes that the stomach shares nerves with. Yeah. It can't show you your heart. It can't show you officially, quote unquote, cancer, but it can show you the nerves that are associated with the dermatomes that the cancer is affected. Yeah. So, so we're trying to stick to the guidelines and the rules of, of, of what we have to say and how we have to present this, but the dermatome show the inside of the body on the outside. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, then, um, so very important this, because uh, suppose someone has a dysfunctional thyroid. Okay. Yeah. So could that be also, we come back to the trigger points, so Monique, in a moment. I just want to ask this question. So someone has a dysfunctional thyroid and has been doing every, everything, all kinds of therapies, it doesn't work. Could it be 
something in the spine, in the in the cervical spine. Of course. That affects the... What controls the thyroid? Your brain and your nervous system. Yeah, that's the right. The thyroid is actually one of the few organs that will show up on 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 a on on, a, on thermography because Absolutely. it's so close to the surface. It's like you know when when people are like, oh, why why is the the the, the knee hole red or you know, white or why is it white here? Why is it white here? Well, it's because that's where the blood vessels come very close to the surface. But the thyroid is right out in the front, so you can always see an inflamed thyroid. You know, and and you can actually see whether the left or the right is more inflamed, and it's it's. It's, it's right around your throat. So, but again, you have to understand within chiropractic, we have one primary term, limitation of matter. If of what? The area is limitation of? Standard, limitation of matter, yeah. If the area has been, if the nerves going to the thyroid have been so compressed for so long and they haven't taken care of themselves, sometimes you might have to take a different route besides chiropractic. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like saying it, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, well, again, it's all in the history and the communication. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was, uh, I wasn't feeling well. My crook was fine. I never trust anyone with my spine because they said, oh, you have rheumatic arthritis. You can't have a uh, chiropractic. I thought, well, when I was in your hands, I know different now. <laughs> yeah. So. Thank you so much. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. I feel so much better. Okay, Monique Youngman, she asked, are trigger points, trigger points visible on thermography? Absolutely. Yes. 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 So let's just talk about the cervical spine. Yeah. So you have C1 through C7, and then you have your trap over here. So mm -hmm. C1 will come at, comes at the very, very top, and it comes all the way out to right where the deltoid or the notch where the chromium comes in your clavicle. And that's, that's your C1 trigger point. And then you have C2, that comes C2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up. So like over here, if you look at the guy on the picture here on the left, you can see that it's, it, his, well, it's his C7 area all along the crease, but he has a trigger point right there on the left side. So that's a trigger point that's associated with the nerve being pinched going to that muscle. I, I want everyone to do me a favor, everyone that's on here. So I want you to raise your hand just like this, okay? So let's just say that this is a muscle and, and open and close it. And, and Manya, I've done this with you before. So everything is moving great. And let's just say this is the nerve that goes to that muscle or trigger point. So if the, if the, if the spine is doing its job, it'll protect it so it can keep working. But if we pinch it, look what happens to your hand. Squeeze your wrist. What happens to your hand? Yeah. It contracts. A muscle's natural state without nerve innervation is contraction. So a trigger point is, an, is literally a way to find, again, a nerve that's being compressed and you can trace it back to it. So the body is giving you every information it possibly needs in order for you to fix it. So you just got to find a way to do it. And as a chiropractor, we find these areas that contract it. Now let's imagine if this is the stomach or the heart yeah. or the lungs. So many of my patients have so many of these subluxations and they're like, I just don't have any energy. It's come the end of the day. I don't want to play with my kids. I don't want to hang out with my husband. I don't want to go for a walk. It's because imagine, this is easy. Now imagine doing the same amount of work like this. Okay, you're doing the same amount of work, but it's taking twice the amount of energy. So at the end of the day, of course they're tired. Of course they don't have energy. Of course the body starts attacking itself. Of course it starts doing everything because it wants you to slow down and correct the problem. Wow. You have an amazing way of, of explaining this. I, I totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. I like telling stories. <laughs> uh, let's see, what, what, what else do we have here? Uh, this. So just Ooh. examples, yeah, uh, of... Wow. Uh, yeah, thoracic and lumbar spine. Thoracic lumbar spine, yeah. So we got L5, L4, L3, L2, and L1, and T12. Again, the way that looks with, if the, if the, if the, if the, um, the skeletal images are correct, the rotation there on the left, I, that's a transition area between T12, L1, and L2. And with the way it's wrote, curving the, 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 the inflammation of the white, 
mm -hmm. on the left, on the left picture, again, a potential, just the subluxation without a bulge. Mm. Yeah. Looking at the one on the right, that is T8, T9, T8 on the right. Mm -hmm. That's a rib head. A rib head. A rib head. Oh, a rib really? that is popped out causing an inflammation of the rhomboids on the right and causing the scapula on the right to not function properly, the musculature on the right. So the rib is popped out of the thoracic region. And the reason I know that is because it's so far right of the actual, the, the actual spinous process that runs down the center. And it's mm -hmm. right over the rib on, the, on that right side. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot. And, and again, <laughs> it's not a flame side, but it's the rhomboid that gets irritated. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's so easy because people are like, oh, I think I have, I, I have patients come in and like, oh, I think I have like cancer or lung problems. And it's just a rib like that. And you put the rib back in and they're like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's easy adjustment. But, uh, yeah, um, I think I also had a similar kind of pain, but I had so much pain to my sternum. Yeah. And because it's the same thing, the rib when yeah. it pops out, it pops forward. Remember, yeah. the sternum is the connection point for the ribs in the back. And if mm -hmm. it pops out, it goes anterior or posterior. The same thing is going to happen to the rib in the front, unless it's one of the floating ribs at the bottom. But they still attach mm -hmm. to the bottom yeah. via lots of ligaments and tendons. Yeah, yeah. It was after my car accident. I ran yeah. my car and you on highway. <laughs> yeah, with the, yeah, 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 with the seat belt. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. So that on the scapula, is that also then a trigger points? Are those trigger well, points? Well, the scapula is crazy because it has anterior and posterior muscles. So you got the you got the posterior muscles over the scapula in the back, and then you have the inside or the anterior scapularis muscles. And 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 you also have ribs that can push up against it, and they can ask for also entrap nerves. So it's really hard to get to those, but it's it's they definitely like this. This whole region is that you got the anterior and posterior scapular muscles that are being irritated by a rib that is on posterior on the right that caused the rhomboids to inflame and it's the whole same nerve pathways yeah. so they all share they share everything and just remember yeah. you know you can sprain your ankle and it can cause you to have headaches yeah absolutely. because you walk funny it twists this bone twists that bone and sooner or later everything's out of whack so you know a rib out here can cause that and then i can't really see the top part of it. Yeah, and then you, you you see the top that 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 one white spot. That's the acromion on the right, which is causing so this inflammation under the scapula that's causing the, the scapula to wing back, and and it's it, it throws off the function of everything. Mm -hmm. you know? It's basically it's it's like sticking a, a, a twig in a in, in a bike that's rotating. It's gonna throw everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, if anyone has any questions, please put it in the chat box because we're here for you to yeah, answer all your questions. And so let me, uh, we, had, oh, we have had all the pictures. Uh, I have a few. Okay, Lula, go ahead, ask your questions. So, Hi. Oh, you can ask them like this too. Yeah. Can okay. I ask them like this? It's a few. I wanted to discuss what we were saying before we went on to the um, uh, uh, the conference. Um, we've no. I've noticed. I was doing a like a PowerPoint, and I found um, a, a, a article that said that we're growing a, like a an extra piece of bone at the back of our occipital uh, due to us being. Um, all the time bent forward due to you know looking at the screens and our phones and apparently they've even found like a couple of inches is this like an evolutionary thing no it's okay so okay let's put our arm up again let's pretend this is the bone and then our hand here is the ligament or tendon that's attached to the muscle that pulls it so with the sitting down and looking down we call tech net you have your EOP, your external occipital protuberance. That's that's the bump that you're talking about. And as the as, as we stretch it and pull on it, if you constantly pull on a bone, it's going to create more calcium, and it's going to create an elongated area. It can create a long area, C1, C2, but most most commonly, it's the, the the EOP. So it's it's if we continue to do it, it's not going to happen in everyone because it's not hereditary. That's a that's a that's a 
It's a repeat trauma of sitting doing this constantly and constantly pulling on the bone. You pull on a bone with the ligaments and tendon, the bone is ultimately going to form calcium. So that's it's not a not a genetic thing, but you know, who knows? The human body is pretty weird. Sometimes it sees enough of it, it says, I'm just gonna grow that way from now on. So it's a matter of, 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 of making sure that. No, I always tell everyone, if you've sat at your computer or your desk for 30 minutes, you've sat 10 minutes too long. Fuck. You know, literally, this is all you have to get your clients and patients to do. Working, working, working. Okay, stand, stretch, bend, rotate your head, sit back down. And go back to work. Every 20 minutes. And it will be an amazing amount of change. You know, it's not the big things that we do that make the biggest change. It's the small things that we do consistently that make the biggest change. Mm -hmm. My patients that come in, they, some of them that have been with you, and they, they're doing the brushing with the breast. Yes. You know, these fibroids go away. <laughs> like, oh, it's amazing. It's all going. No, you did something small consistently, and you allowed your lymph to drain and the fibroids to go away. It's the small things done consistently that make the biggest change, always. Always. Can I also working out five hours at the gym once a month isn't going to do nothing, but no. going on a ten minute walk every day will. So can we go back to the first gentleman with the? Uh, sure. Yeah. So sure. Um, I I found that uh, we have like a back the back fat that you said is brown fat, yeah. and that's what keeps us warm because I do injectables and I'm not supposed to go use ones that would um, actually affect the brown fat mm -hmm. because that's what keeps you thermally warm mm -hmm. yeah. but um so this gentleman um he's it's c7 I, I found a book on edgar casey studies and he was saying how uh the the spirit comes through the throat that are and also this man has a problem with depression and throat is also the area of expression and you know, if you don't, if it's out, out of balance, you can um, not speak your truth, so to speak. In Louise Hayes, it's speaking your truth, hear your mm -hmm. truth, and the the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, so, I chakra. Yeah, I I just thought maybe with this gentleman, if he had um, areas, you know, associated with um, not, yeah. Oh, he's depressed always. Well, okay. I know this man, he's, he's always depressed. So, I, I only know things in, in my terms of, of, of the scientific terms. I, I love the chakras. I don't know enough about them, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do understand the nervous system, the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system. And you have to think of the, the whole nervous system. And your brain emits trillions of impulses every second and, and secretes trillions of, of, of hormones and and if those hormones and impulses can't get to the rest of the body because of uh, stress or, or a bone out of alignment, it will back up and it can cause depression. I mean, it's just, it, it's just common sense. If information can't get from point A to point B, it's gonna back up. It's no different than driving down the highway and there being a backup on the highway system because a car had an accident. You have to clear that accident before it can flow again. You have to clear the nervous system so that the hormones and the nervous impulses can flow. And if C7, C5, C6 goes to the, 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 your throat, yeah, that will decrease his ability to speak. And if his brain is backed up, it will decrease his ability to speak the truth because he won't know what that truth is because it's, it's clouded and falls within his brain. To me, again, I'm a chiropractor. Everything goes back to the nervous system. Yeah. But the nervous system is also part of our ability to connect, not just with each other, but with the universe in, in, in and of itself. Yeah. So, you know, Thank they, you, they, uh, they did this great study uh, with two, oh. two colliders. There was a collider in Virginia and one in, in, in Switzerland, the, the big giant colliders, where they took a, a hydrogen molecule and they they, they spun it around almost at the speed of light and then they bombarded it with a proton. And they had another hydrogen molecule in Virginia. And at that same exact moment, the electrons switched position or stopped rotating and rotated the opposite direction in Switzerland. And the one in Virginia started rotating a different way. So 
in that one simple thing, they showed that we all are connected at an atomic level. And so if we're connected at an atomic level, then imagine how our body in and of itself and one organism is connected. So, you know, it's, yeah, I can see what you're talking about. Him not being able to speak his truth and being involved and not being able to talk. It's, it's all connected. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't know if I went on top topic there. I've tried to. No, uh, no, perfectly fine. All the questions are uh, very welcome. Any other questions, uh, Lula? Yes. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, shoot. So if scoliosis is not uh, congenital and um, it's kind of uh, adopted throughout your life, mm -hmm. would you say, because uh, as we grow uh, from a fetus, we go round, mm -hmm. if, w would it either be protecting yourself or protecting organs or reverting back to childhood, trauma? If you know how, I mean, by you dealing with the spine, um, can it be corrected with scoliosis? It can if there's not a, if, if there's not too much damage. That's why you know I adjust babies that are like ten minutes old. Okay. You know, the, oh, really? the, the, we call the the when the, just think of how most babies are born. They're they're either if they're not naturally born, they're either pulled out from the left side to bring the shoulder out or they're suctioned out or they use forceps or, you know, they, 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 they and we call that the primary subluxation. When one bone goes out of alignment, if it's not corrected, at that point, it's just cartilage. It will, it will form aberrantly. It will form wrong as it grows over ages. Has anyone here ever been to India? No. Okay. Not me. If you ever go to India, there's they have different caste systems. They have and 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 the untouchables are the are the lowest of the caste system, and they're not able to get jobs. They're not able to do anything, and it's really sad. And some of the mothers, when they have their children, because they know their children won't be able to actually have a living, will take the child's arms and tie it behind their back, or take the legs and tie it over the head. So as they grow, their bones will grow abnormally, so they can at least beg. So. That's an extreme example of just a bone out of alignment that can cause a scoliosis that, is a, that, that wasn't congenital, but it, it was functional. And if it was corrected at a young age, it might never have occurred. Okay, thank you. And, oh, sorry, I just want to ask. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, I have another question yeah, coming okay. up from the chat. Is that okay, Lula? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Lula, send me an email. We'll talk more about it. <laughs> Lula, come over from London. Yeah. Take the train. <laughs> okay. What about chiropractic for clients with severe osteoporosis? Is it visible on thermograms? Uh, is it treatable with chiropraxy? So I use a thing called in body scanner that actually checks for osteoporosis. So I, I do that in conjunction with my thermography. Mm -hmm. um, I can't comment on that because I haven't used thermography to actually look at osteoporosis in that matter. Well, you know, I would say that I couldn't be able to see it because no. thermography basically shows the exterior region. It doesn't go deep into the body. And no. now, mind you, I have seen taken pictures of somebody that had a very large tumor that when they took pictures, it showed, but the tumor was the size of a, of a, of a, of a soccer ball and was pushing out their belly. And so it was irritating the surface above it. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to well, go and see and let her answer that. Yeah, I, th I think um, if it's in an inflammation stage, I would say uh, we would be able to see inflammations. But the far most important thing of uh, interpreting uh, a thermogram is asymmetry in temperatures because the body always wants to keep it symmetrical. And so the most important thing we're looking at first is asymmetry in temperatures. That's the far most important thing. And then uh, surely we can look at inflammations, but also cooler spots. Those can mean inflammations as well, because the, um, the uh, our central nervous system knows when something go is going on with the stomach. So if you have a blue area over the anatomical region of your stomach, it doesn't mean it's cold down there, but it means that the blood is uh, redirected to the stomach to help it. 
Yeah. So that's the beautiful thing about tomography, but that's also the thing that makes it so uh, uh, miscommunicated because they say, but it's cold. There's no inflammation. Yeah, there is because it's cold, you know, because the blood is flowing away to help the stomach. And that's something our nervous system is doing. So, yeah, you can't say is osteoporosis visible on thermograms no you can't you can't just say it like that you, you yeah. have to make the, the, the interpretation of the whole full body yeah okay another question is is the thermography also for people with eds ehlers danlos syndrome uh what was ehlers danlos syndrome i don't know in combination with arthritis um bindweefsel aandoening een bindweefsel aandoening oh thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> Soms moet ik even kijken. Ja, yeah, oké. Okay. It's, uh, it's like a hypermobility uh, in oh. patients. Oké. Okay. So to again. the extreme. Oké. Okay, so yeah, I again. have a great one for this. So I, okay. I call it yoga spine. Yoga spine. Yoga spine. Uh, my patients that have are, are incredibly hypermobile. They do yoga. They could they could tie themselves into pretzels. They have more inflammation than any other patient I've ever seen oh, that they no, come me. in. And they're like, well, I don't understand. Why do I have, I'm, I'm so flexible. I'm so this. I'm like, yeah, but the, the, the small muscles that we don't have, that we do and don't have control over. Because remember the sympathetic and parasympathetic muscles. Like, you know, I can make a muscle here because I want to, but if I don't think about it, it's not going to make the muscle. But the muscles of your spine, the, the small ones that I said earlier, the, the, like the multifidus and the rotatory, they are both sympathetic and parasympathetic, being the fact that I can move them if I want to, but I don't have to think about sitting upright. So if I'm getting what he's saying here, right, it, it, it's, it's, yes, it will show up on thermography in those situations. Yeah. Um, it, it shows up on every yoga patient. Yeah, if you sit like a pretzel. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're so flexible, but the, the small, Sympathetic, parasympathetic muscles aren't responding correctly to it. So that you, you need to focus on them. Your, your large muscles are so flexible, but the small ones that, that control your posture and keep you upright without having to think about it, or the same ones that make your heart beat without having to think, beat, heart, beat, heart, beat, heart, beat, heart, beat, heart, or your diaphragm, which you can breathe in and breathe out, but you don't have to think about it because it does it automatically as well. Those, you can pick up on those from, from the thermography, but you have to know what you're looking for. Yes, absolutely. And history is important as well. Yeah, the communication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So another question. Oh, Yoke says uh, IDXA scanning will show osteoporosis, does not inflame. Uh, you know, if, if something is not inflamed, uh, so sometimes hip problems are very difficult to diagnose because there, there's only this cold. So if there is an inflammation, you can say, hey, there's an inflammation. But if there's not an inflammation, so it's a degenerative state, then it's very difficult to uh, to really diagnose. How do you treat that, uh, Gary? What? How do you deal with that? Inflammation can be acute and chronic. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to differentiate between the acute aspect of inflammation and the chronic. But a chronic irritation in the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral region that might show up cold and its end joint will show up red as acute inflammation in the end joint mm -hmm. because the nerve is not functioning the way it's supposed to. So the tissue cells that those nerves innervate are inflamed. People confuse pain with just pain. It, pain comes when a tissue cell can no longer function properly and it emits a hormone that the nerves pick up on. So there's pain like I stabbed you in the leg and how that hurt. And there's pain that this chronic compression of a nerve going to, I don't know, let's say your calf, cause the calf to be red and inflamed, but it's the tissue cells that are red and inflamed because of the fact that they're no longer getting the information from the brain on how to reduplicate themselves. So I don't, I don't know if that answers the direct question, but it's, it, again, you have to be able to interpret the, the, the picture correct because a cold image on a thermography is chronic inflammation that can no longer put out heat. It just, think of it as being tired. It doesn't want to run the race anymore. And it's like, me, I'm just done. I'm not going to yeah. put out any heat because I just, I can't do anything. Yeah. 
That's right. Okay, well, we're already an hour on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's us in your practice. I know, it's so much skinnier then. Mm. <laughs> um, so, uh, I want to thank you so very much, Harry, for being here with us and explaining mm -hmm. everything to us. I hope my story has made sense. And, you know, if any of you have any questions at all, please just email me and, and, and uh, I will try to get to them all. And everyone is always welcome at my practice if you want to see how we do it and what we do. And, um, you know, my office is my home and, and, and any of you guys that use this, you are my family. So please. I'm at your service. Thank you so very much. And you wrote a wonderful ebook, and it's all for you free to download. So yes. go visit the website www.giropraxie.com. I will put it in the, nice in the chat box as well. It. Sorry? It sounds so much nicer when you say well, <laughs> <same. laughs> it. Giropraxie.com. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here's the email, here's the, the URL of the website. So go to the website. The ebook is in Dutch and in English. So download mm -hmm. it. And my oh. website is in Dutch and in English as well. So we yes. try to do it in both languages. Yes, yes. My Netherlands is not me good, but I probeer and I open it every day. No, you do it fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So okay, thank you so very much. Thank this you. Is, I has love been you so and I'll talk cool. to you soon, everybody. Okay. Thank you I so much. You too. Bye bye. bye. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Blessings <laughs> to you all. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Love you all. Bye. 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 <laughs>